So we put wet soap on the outside of our seal in order to get the uh, this part to slide down in there. That's the uh, seal underneath the uh, uh, fabric softener area there. So we got that back in there. We can go ahead and put our top back on where the fabric softener goes. Okay, so that's in there. The fabric softener dispensers all back together. So that's good there. This part actually is catching like it should. Alright, so we're going to put it down the top. Before we, now we got everything in place. I just didn't put my bolts in the back. We're going to go ahead and go into diagnostics here. And here's how you do that. If you want to start this thing off in the 12 o'clock position, might be the easiest way. Just take it all the way around, back to the 6 o'clock position, you can go around twice, one time, three times, whatever you want to do, just end up in the 6 o'clock position. Is that for the sake of this video, you could do it in any position, but this, for simplifying the uh, explanation of this, we're going to do it like this. So we're going to go forward, we're going to go clockwise, three spaces, we're going to go counterclockwise, three spaces. Clockwise one space, counterclockwise one space, and this all has to be done in a steady uh, pace and with no pauses in between, not too fast, not too slow. So here we go. One, two, three, one, two. What did I do wrong there? Okay, let's go back. One, two, three. Now, you, you got to have three back, and then you can start going forward. So one, two, three, one, two. So that right there, all those lights will come on let you know you're in diagnostics. The first light right there, when you turn this, after all the lights are blinking, you turn the knob to get to different selections. So we're going to go to this one. That's going to be, that would actually be your error code. You could push start and read error codes. We're not going to deal with that. We could go to the second one. That's automatic diagnostics. You could press start and it would go through a series of trying out different loads in the machine and see if it could find a, a malfunction there. The next one's going to be manual diagnostics. You can push start and then turn the knob to select which load you want to try. We'll do that in a minute for spin. We're going to go to the next one. This is the recalibration with the wrench light lit. We're going to push start. These are chasing. This is going to go through a recalibration. The computer will do all of this. We'll let that recalibrate. It doesn't take very long. We'll continue to run this video during this just to give you an idea of what's going on. So at the end of the recalibration cycle, this thing will push out just a little bit of water through the water valves and then it'll go to the uh, complete light. Usually I believe will come on on these. So that's probably getting close to the end here. It might give a little splash of water, a little bit of water coming out. Yeah, most models do. I guess maybe there may be some that do not. Your recalibration cycle may not do exactly the same scenario as this one. They can be different. But the thing is, let it run through it. We'll let it go until it completes. And uh, maybe this one's not going to put out any water. There it is. There's a little squirt of water. A little squirt of water at the end. It should come with complete light and the lid should unlock. Okay, this one's not going to give a complete light. So anyway, 
we're completed now we're going to go back into the diagnostics so the reason i go around several times on these is just to give the control board uh, time to kind of um, be clear of the cycle that it was just in sometimes if you hurry up and do this you'll notice if you hurry up and try to go into any of the diagnostic modes you will notice that it won't go the first time but i found that if you just wait on it or wait for it to time out then do this it won't be a problem so now what we're going to do we're going to go into that manual diagnostics or manual um uh, your yeah, manual diagnostics where you can go in here. That's the spin and complete light. We're going to push the start button. The very first thing on this with all lights blank, uh, clear, you can turn that one time you see the lights begin to light up in either direction. We want to be on the clear. You push that, that should lock the lid. So with the lid, then this thing won't let you do any of the spin functions or the agitate functions without that lid lock. Even in diagnostics, that lid has to be locked. Uh, so we're going to go on over. Um, I'll show you a few of these. The first few are just water valve. So there's blank. You go kind of or go clockwise one notch. That's a water valve. I don't want to run any water until I get a spin. So I'm gonna skip those. Actually, that's a water valve also. On a lot of them, that one's not even used. This, I'm not sure what the rinse light is. Not used. Uh, not used not used. Now the next one is used. It's the drain pump. So that would be your drain. And I'm going to let that one just a second. Make sure there's, so there's no water in there. We're going to run it. Now one past that. I think this one's not used. Not used. Now the next one is your first spin. The wash and the complete. This is your low speed spin. I'm going to go one past that. That's the spin and wash. That's your faster spin. We're going to let that go. So that's a lot quieter than the old one. We're going to also run this thing into the... Uh, the reason I like to leave these off, another reason is you have to wait for this basket, even though you pressed pause. This basket has to completely stop before you can select something else. Well, I've got this thing loose, so I can reach down in here with gloves on kind of rest my hand against that tub and slow it down quicker. I don't have to wait as long. So I'm going to go next is that's your agitate. Uh, that's going to be, I can't remember if it's the long or short, we'll see here. That'll give it, the actuator will be shifting right now down below to put the splutch into the right position. This is just kind of letting the bearings, the gear case, everything move around, kind of seat better, including the seal. So that's your short agitate. I don't know why it's making that noise there. Everything went in perfectly. So let's go to the long agitator. All right. At that point, we don't want that noise. We have to check that. So we're going to run some. Why is it doing that? What did I do? Everything should be exactly right. The uh, basket went in there exactly as it should. Let's put a little water in it. We didn't leave anything down in that tub, did we? I'm going to go back and unlock this lid so I can raise the lid. So it's spinning real good up here. Um, everything went on perfect. Okay, so we got water going in. We're gonna lock this. I'm gonna go back over to the 
So there's the first spin, no, there's the first spin, second uh, high speed spin, uh, short agitate. Sounding a lot better with water in there. We're gonna pause that one, go to the fast one. So we're gonna let that continue to run. We're gonna look underneath the leaks and we'll be right back. Okay, so once we got a little water in there before it gets real heavy with it agitating. So we got that in the long agitate. We've also done the fast agitate, the little short strokes. And uh, that's moving everything around. Um, Letting that run, we're checking for leaks just to make sure that our seal did good and we don't see any water coming out inside. Before it gets too heavy, we actually leaned it back just a little bit, look underneath. And so everything's been looking good. Don't leave it back too far. Your um, the water uh, sprayer thing in here, uh, if you get too much, it'll land on the tub and maybe splatter off the tub and make you think you've got a leak. So you want to do it while the water's relatively low. You can get some water in there like this. You can even go back to the valve and turn the water off and let it just agitate or even you can even turn the agitate off and uh, go underneath and check. Main thing is you don't want to splash any water off the inside to make you think that you've got a leak and you're tra chasing down a leak that you don't really have. So we're going to put this thing, we're going to turn off that agitate. There's the spin, spin, agitate. That turns that off. We're gonna go back to the drain pump. The drain pump is, I passed it, right here with the rinse, spin, and complete. That's the drain. We're gonna drain out all the water. It's gonna make this thing lighter to push back into place. And we're gonna put our screws on the back. I'll show you an easy way to put these screws on if you're in a home. And if you're like me, you don't really wanna pull these out. This one has a shelf above it, so it made it kind of, we needed to pull it out a little bit anyway. It's also a tile floor, uh, so that, they're pretty forgiving. But if you're on linoleum, older linoleum, any kind of vinyl, uh, carpet can be this way, then you really stand a chance of doing damage to a floor. And that's something we don't want. So what you can do is, uh, Here's our pressure tube cover. So we're getting ready to finish this up. You can reach inside here, grab down on the tub or whatever, put your foot on the bottom, keep this thing from moving. Lean this thing towards you. Let it rest on your leg. That's gotta kind of be in place and lined up. So you can put a screw in there. Okay, so put those two screws in, the cover for the wires and the pressure tube. Thanks for watching.